Hello, welcome everybody. So, in this part 2 video on transcription, I will be discussing further aspect of transcription. In part 1 of the class, you learned about various transcriptional control elements where we saw how promoter and promoter proximal elements are there in the eukaryote and prokaryote. So, to proceed further in this video, I will be talking about the pre initiation complex which is formed and uh, that facilitates the process of transcription. So, I start with the description of RNA polymerase enzyme. RNA polymerase enzyme in prokaryote and in eukaryote. In eukaryote, we have RNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3 types of RNA polymerases we have. But in prokaryote, we have only one type of RNA polymerase which is multi subunit. Even the RNA polymerases of eukaryote, all these 1, 2 and 3 RNA polymerases are multi subunit proteins. So, first if I start talking about the prokaryotic RNA polymerase, this is having 2 alpha, 1 beta, 1 beta prime, 1 omega subunit and this is making you the core enzyme which is having catalytic activity. Now, when sigma subunit is also attached with this core enzyme, the whole of the enzyme is called holoenzyme. So, this is an important aspect of RNA polymerase in prokaryote. You must know. Diagrammatically, you can represent RNA polymerase in this fashion, where two alpha subunit, one beta, one beta prime, one omega subunit will be there. The catalytic activity is there in the beta subunit of RNA polymerase and the sigma subunit which I told you which is making it a holo enzyme that sigma subunit is actually the subunit which is deciding the binding of RNA polymerase at promoter region. The duty of sigma subunit is to identify the promoter and bind there. So, once the RNA polymerase is binding the promoter area, the transcription takes place and the content of sigma subunit is only one third of the core enzyme numbers. So, what I mean to say that sigma subunit are lesser in number compared to the core enzyme number and sigma subunit duty is just to you know facilitate binding of RNA polymerase enzyme, the whole enzyme and promoter area correctly so that the correct transcription takes place. When I talk to you about eukaryotic RNA polymerase, we have three subtypes of RNA polymerases there and they all have a different role to play. They all have different responsibilities as far as the types of RNA synthesis is concerned. This I will be detailing you later. So, now the question arises that we have sigma subunit in prokaryotic RNA polymerase so that is going to correctly identify the promoter and binds there. We do not have anything of that sort you know in the eukaryotic RNA polymerases. The main RNA polymerase which is you know meant to synthesize mRNA is RNA polymerase 2 in eukaryotes. So, I will be dealing in detail with that RNA polymerase 2 and that RNA polymerase 2 in eukaryote is multi subunit complex but certainly it is having no arrangement, no subunit which can identify the promoter area. So, the binding of this RNA polymerase correctly at promoter site is a challenge and suppose this is a promoter site with a you know eukaryotic DNA it is and uh, this is promoter site and somewhere here you have gene. So, how the RNA polymerase is brought to this particular place. For that you must know that we have something called Tata box in most of the eukaryotic gene in the promoter area we have a region called Tata box. That Tata box attracts a protein which is called this is uh, suppose the Tata area Tata box it attracts a protein which is called Tata binding protein. Now this Tata box binds with Tata binding protein which is called Tata binding protein TBP and this is 30 kilo Dalton in molecular weight. So, it is having adequate weight with it. So, this Tata binding protein further fetches several other proteins 
which are called Tata binding protein associated factors TAF. So number of factors are attracted to this Tata binding protein. The important one is the Tata transcription factor 2T. So the Tata binding protein attracts various transcription factor. The most important one is transcription factor 2D and once this kind of complex is formed this recruits RNA polymerase to bind here and make uh, you know RNA polymerase binds here and this kind of complex is called pre-initiation complex transcription pre-initiation complex pre-initiation complex and this kind of complex further recruits various other transcription factors to enumerate they are transcription factor 2a 2b we don't have cng we have 2d which i have already told you it's already binding this is the first one to bind then we have 2e 2f and 2h so we have many number of transcription factors which are going to bind to you. We do not have transcription factor 2C or 2G. We do not have this. So this kind of pre-initiation complex is formed which is having the RNA polymerase in it and this is how the eukaryotic transcription initiation takes place. So binding of RNA polymerase at the promoter in prokaryote is much easier because it has sigma subunit which identify the correct promoter and binds there. But in eukaryote, we need to have various transcription factors which are recruited with uh, uh, the help of Tata binding protein and then the transcription begins. So this is regarding the initiation phase of transcription I have described where the promoter is recognized and the RNA polymerase ultimately binds there. So that is only the initiation phase of, phase of transcription. If uh, anyone, anybody asks you to define the initiation phase of transcription, it means that identification of promoter area and binding of RNA polymerase there. When I talk to you about elongation phase of transcription, you must know that RNA polymerase of prokaryote as well as of eukaryote contains you know the activity which is called 5 to 3 polymerase activity which tend to read the gene and I you know identify the gene and make the RNA in 5 to 3 prime direction. For this you must know that reading of the gene is going to be 3 to 5 direction but the making of RNA will be in 5 to 3 direction and RNA polymerase whether it is eukaryote or prokaryote has got no exonuclease no 3 to 5 exonuclease activity no proofreading activity. So the making of RNA is full of errors but that's acceptable to the system to the evolution because RNA is not a hereditary material it doesn't uh, go to uh, you know daughter cell after division. So the errors are much accepted. The error in the DNA is never accepted. We have proofreading in DNA polymerase, but RNA polymerase does not have proofreading activity. And that is why the rate of transcription is faster than rate of DNA synthesis. As far as termination is concerned, termination of transcription is concerned in eukaryote the things are not very clear that how the termination occurs but in prokaryote they have clearly described the termination in a row dependent manner and row independent manner so this is important one you must know that this row dependent and row independent manner transcription termination is described in the prokaryote so the termination means at the end of gene how the termination of transcription occurs. You cannot say that there is a stop codon at the end of gene. No, stop codon we talk in terms of translation. 
Estrocodon is their own mRNA which terminates the translation. So you, uh, I generally get the answer from students when I say how the termination of transcription occurs. They say Estrocodon is there at the end of the gene. No, they never say that. You will learn during translation that Estrocodon are meant to terminate the translation, not the transcription. So the question arises how the termination of transcription occurs at the end of gene and as I am telling you in the prokaryote it is described in a row dependent fashion and certain genes are getting terminated during transcription you know their termination of transcription takes place in a row independent fashion. So first I am going to describe you row dependent termination of transcription in prokaryote. So when I talk to you about road dependent termination of transcription in prokaryote, you need to have row factor which is represented in this fashion, row factor. This is hexameric protein, hexameric protein means having six subunits and this identify. One specific area at the end of gene that is called RUT, that is row utilizing termination signal. RUT. This process also demands ATP, and illustratively, I can explain you the row dependent termination in this particular diagram. This is a transcription bubble where this is the gene which is undergoing transcription in this transcription bubble. I can represent you this emerging RNA which is getting synthesized in 5 to 3 prime direction in this fashion. Due to binding of various transcription factor, you have transcription bubble seen like this. In which RNA polymerase is also a component. You must know that this RNA polymerase which is newly synthesized is having transient non-covalent interaction between the gene nucleotide sequence and its own sequence and that is actually making this RNA stay in the transcription bubble. So these kind of non-covalent interaction between the newly synthesized RNA portion and the gene nucleotide sequence is mandatory for this RNA to hold into this transcription bubble. When I talked to you about row factor, as I told you, it's a hexameric protein. It captures the emerging RNA at one of its end and ascends to reach the terminus. And for this process, ATP is required. And those genes whose transcription is getting terminated in a row dependent fashion, they have a specific nucleotide sequence towards the end of these genes and that's called RUT, row utilizing termination signal. So these RNA, as the transcription proceeds, these RNA further elongates and along with that the row factor also, you know, follow it. And once the rut element is identified by row factor, the induced activity is seen in row factor, enzymatic activity is seen in row factor and that enzymatic activity is DNA, RNA, helicase activity. So this RNA, DNA, RNA, helicase activity is induced enzymatic activity in the row factor on identification of rut element at the end of gene. And because of this DNA RNA helicase activity, the interaction between the gene and the RNA is disrupted and the RNA is freed and it falls out of the transcription bubble and that results in termination of transcription in a row dependent fashion in prokaryotic genes. So there are many number of genes where the row dependent termination is taking place for which even ATP is required row factor is required and the condition is that that gene must end with rut element. Now another process which is described in the prokaryotic gene termination transcription um, 
you know is the row independent fashion termination where they simply describe that the newly synthesized RNA is having one specific sequence towards the end which is capable of making intra-chain loop that's called lariat loop or stem loop and this is due to the complementary basis at the end of the RNA which is going to interact in a non-covalent fashion in a hydrogen bonding and that results in looping and this kind of looping is actually resulting in termination of RNA synthesis and all those RNAs which are you know terminating and falling out of the transcription bubble are showing you the stem loop or the lariat loop structure towards its three prime end. So this is also has been described in prokaryotic gene transcription and as I have told you already in eukaryotic gene transcription termination is still the research is going on and but they do not have clear evidence you know how the termination occurs. So very often they ask you this row dependent row independent termination is described in prokaryote or eukaryote you have to say it is in prokaryotes. So this in nutshell is about the initiation phase of the transcription, elongation and termination phase of transcription. So in the next part of it, I discuss you the post transcriptional modification. And before I end this video, let me tell you that the RNA polymerase 2 in prokaryote is having carboxy terminal domain which undergo phosphorylation at serine and three on residues and that's very very important part of uh, functioning of this RNA polymerase because only after phosphorylation of CTD where serine and three on in residues are undergoing phosphorylation the RNA polymerase 2 gets activated and uh, enters in the elongation phase of transcription so this was one additional point you must know and uh, thank you for watching thank you very much